come up with some new things that were known worldwide. Uh, in fact, he got a, uh, an invitation to Mexico for the, from the agricultural minister to come and lecture about this new corn that he had developed that would, would grow with a minimum of water and uh, instead of one or two ears, uh, his, he, he has pictures of corn stalks with 10 ears of corn. When he got to Mexico, uh, with the attitude of the whole world against South Africa at that time, uh, they wouldn't let him speak. Now this jumps ahead to about uh, 1976 or so thereabouts. But uh, getting back to his uh, uh, wedding to my mother, uh, he got word from an older daughter that um, she was thinking of marrying an American. Well, he immediately got off a, a wire to uh, my father, you are not to marry an American, you know, get, get back home here to South Africa. My father uh, wired back, oh, I have no intentions of getting married. I'm coming as soon as uh, school is finished. Uh, he, he went to what is now uh, Kansas State and uh, rather than go back home in the summer, she finished everything in three years and um, told my mother he was not going back to South Africa. He had a job lined up in America. So he lied both to his father and my mother so that when uh, he greeted her. Uh, naturally, he was um, upset that uh, this this son had disobeyed him, and then lied to him. And uh, so the first thing he said to my mother is, uh, "I don't uh, like Americans." <clears throat> now, I have no idea how he got that attitude when he, you know, first came to the. Uh, 1893 uh, Chicago Exposition. But, um, uh, she said to him, well, I don't think I'm going to like South Africa. <laughs> so at that point, he gave her a two-year probation. She was not welcome in their home until she passed the probation period. Well, as uh, the time went on, she was about seven months pregnant with me, and he sent her a beautiful basket of fruit with a note. You have passed the probation. You are now welcome to come to our home. Well, that's the time she should have uh, forgotten about uh, the, the past and made a friendly effort to have, uh, have a drink family getting along pretty good. But instead, she sent the fruit back to him with her note. You Don't put me on mother. probation for two years, I'm putting you on probation for ten years. <laughs> uh, he, he was a um, um, powerful bore. Boar simply means farmer, mm -hmm. but uh, uh, he was at the stage of life, full of himself, egotistical, not used to anybody ever crossing him. In fact, when, uh, when we went to South Africa in 94, uh, the first thing Tim did uh, is take me all around Johannesburg and Pretoria and show me all the buildings that he had built, government big, main government buildings that he had, had built. He was something like a 
South African Trump, where he had uh, really accomplished things and uh, and had made uh, lots of uh, uh, money. Uh, where where he really got uh, money though was um, when. Uh, <coughs> And uh, this this was uh, eighteen thousand acres that uh, that he ended up buying for from a company that was mining gold, and they ended up the, they they knew where the gold was, but they could never conquer the water. In fact, my my father actually told me years and years later in one of his trips that. Uh, they, they knew the gold was down there, but uh, at that point, they, they couldn't come up with pumps that could handle the water. Uh, he emphasized today they, they could have done it, but back then they couldn't. Mm -hmm. But the um, um, thing that um, gave him his first uh, emphasis was uh, uh, getting rid of the Chinese workers. The, uh, um, determined the South African uh, statesmen thought, well, they, they already had enough different um, uh, uh, people groups. They had the, the black South, South Africans, they had the Asians, but mainly coming from India. They, they had um, now the, the Europeans were really coming in, and uh, here they had brought in Chinese to work in the mines. And they determined they needed to eliminate the Chinese. Mm -hmm. And so um, with uh, uh, his being able to really get along, especially with the, the Zulus, who had um, pretty much um, um, lost their their huge power where they they controlled all of the South African tribes, but um, he somehow was able to get along, and he promised the miners he could provide African labor. Nobody could get the Africans to work to go down deep into the mines. And he said he he would promise that he could get the Zulu men to take six months at a time and work those mines. And uh, they actually got where the, the Zulus thought it was a, a real badge of honor if they could show off a jacket that was uh, monster miners. And so the fact that he was able to <coughs> replace the Chinese workers, they managed to take all of the Chinese workers, ship them back to China. And um, from that, uh, he uh, ended up the fact that he was paid to supply the mine workers. He was able to buy this uh, 18,000 acres. So um, that's uh, what he was at the time my mother arrived in South Africa. Uh, so um, to give just a little additional uh, idea of um, um, uh, actual bitter attitude against his um, his own son. Uh, my father was a um, worker at um, Agricultural College in Potchefstroom, uh, where I was born. Uh, anytime I have to give my birthplace, I have to spell out the uh, Potchefstroom, and uh, uh, naturally nobody's ever heard, heard, heard of that uh, before. But uh, he would write things like, um, you have my son on your staff at the college. 
and uh, he has been a disobedient son. I think you should dismiss him. And so he did. You know, that was the uh, same time my mother's father in Arkansas was uh, uh, doing everything to urge them to come to America. Well, at that point, there's enough reason that uh, he jumped at the opportunity, especially when my uh, grandfather in Arkansas offered to get the hometown paper so that he could be, be the editor. So they came in the big boom in uh, uh, America, which was uh, like 1926. Everything was going going great, but everybody knows what happened in 29. Well, by then he had built up uh, big debts in the paper, and with the economy sinking fast, uh, uh, naturally the bills were not being paid by the advertisers, and uh, then by 2930, his father, my grandfather in Africa, um, began uh, emphasizing that if you ever want to get uh, the inheritance, uh, you get yourself back here. Well, um, to him, my father, uh, he thought uh, this really hitting his head against the wall, trying to go against the big depression, even though it was just, just beginning. But um, uh, he um, did everything to convince my mother to come to. Well, she uh, didn't think she had much of a future in South Africa, and she just bought and wouldn't do it. So he, uh, in his thinking, the sensible thing to do was uh, leave uh, America, where there's not much future at this time, and get back where he had the life of Riley in, in South Africa. Uh, so he took off, came up to Chicago to go down the St. Lawrence Seaway and into South Africa, and um, some. Uh, uh, probably uh, 30 years later when he was coming to his 50th anniversary of uh, what is now Kansas State uh, he, he wrote to a woman, Mrs. Fisher that he had got to know on that trip on the St. Lawrence Seaway and uh, he had told her that uh, that he had um, a son in Chicago and he was uh, coming and uh, on the way to his graduation uh, and have uh, me uh, to look her up. She, she was in um, uh, northwest uh, suburbs. When I got in touch with her, she, she would not believe that uh, this uh, man that was so charming to her, uh, actually had no idea if anything went farther than that, but uh, she absolutely wouldn't believe, even when I came to see her and line up a visit, that here he was, uh, he didn't ever mention to her that he was just leaving a wife and four children in Arkansas. Mm. But uh, that, that's just one of the little items that uh, uh, gives a, a little bit uh, of the character. Well, to um, bring the whole story to close, I did um, manage to get some appreciation from my children, six children, at, at 
at least uh, most of them, that um, they had a, a quite different father than their father, grandfather, and great-grandfather. So that's the best part of the, the story is that I trust I was able to be um, a better father than my forefathers. Mm -hmm. <laughs>